Our scripture today is from Deuteronomy 30, verses 19 through 28, the Common English Bible. I call heaven and earth as my witnesses against you right now. I have set life and death, blessing and curse before you. Now choose life so that you and your descendants will live by loving the Lord your God, by obeying his voice and by clinging to him. The Wednesday before Christmas, my husband and our three kids gathered to celebrate with just us before the big family party on Christmas Day. I served lasagna as our meal. I put it in the oven, covered for the first 45 minutes, then went to take the top off it for the last bit of baking. As I took the lid off, I failed to observe that a lasagna noodle was stuck to the lid, so a giant piece of pasta fell out and slid down the inside of the oven door, making a mess. It was steaming hot, so I used a spatula to scoop it up and fling it into the sink so it could cool off before I threw it away. I cleaned up the oven as best I could, put the lasagna back in to bake, and forgot about the noodle in the sink. That was my second mistake that night. A few minutes later, I heard a small commotion in the kitchen and went in to discover my cat, Nimbus, had gone after that noodle in the sink and dropped it. It was lying on the kitchen floor, splattering tomato sauce all over. So I cleaned up mess number two, cause and effect. I failed to be observant and think ahead, and as a result, I had to clean up two kitchen messes. Not everything in life is so clear-cut. We find ourselves in lots of situations where cause and effect are difficult to see. And so when we struggle for understanding, we often find it comforting to pull God into it by saying, everything happens for a reason. We frequently turn to this phrase when someone has unexpectedly passed away, or we use one of its cousins. It must have been their time. It was a part of God's plan, and we have to accept God's will. The thing is, if we want to stand on these statements, then we need to examine where they lead us, and it might not be where we think. We are trying to give comfort and help make sense of hard realities. But there are at least three problems we have to address first. The first one is that these statements go to some silly places and some dark places we'd rather not be. If everything happens for a reason is true, then I have to accept that God willed Nimbus to make a mess and that he preordained that the Dodgers would win the World Series. Do we really believe that? Also, we have to accept that 75 million people died violent and torturous deaths in World War II because that's what God wanted. And all the suffering and death caused by COVID-19 is part of God's plan. Do we really think that God is behind these events? Second, everything happens for a reason eliminates personal responsibility for our actions. Whatever I do is ultimately God's will. So it's legitimate to say, sorry, hon, that I forgot your birthday, but it must have been a part of God's plan. Do you think my husband will accept that excuse? And if I cheat on my spouse, it doesn't matter who I heard in the process because God was in it. And if I drink and drive and someone gets killed, well, everything happens for a reason, right, God? I'm not personally accountable. The third problem leads from the second. Everything happens for a reason makes God responsible for everyone's actions. God becomes the author of every terrible thing that happens in our world. Murder, rape, child abuse, cancer, violence all ordained by God. Do you want to live in that world where 
God's love is expressed in these ways? Do you want to worship that God? I don't. I believe in a God of true and faithful love, who created us in love, sent Jesus to teach us this love and die for us in love, who guides and upholds us and works in our lives for our well-being every day. Here's the big questions everything happens for a reason brings up for us. Is God a big puppeteer in the sky and we his puppets? Or are we his partners in ministry? Is God the master manipulator and we are his pawns on a giant chessboard? Or are we his beloved children who he graciously respects? I believe we are children and partners. And the whole Bible points to this. In our scripture this morning, Moses was speaking to the Israelites as they were about to cross the Jordan River into the promised land. Moses was reminding them that they have choices to make. If they choose to follow God, that will be the way to prosperity and hope. Joshua says something similar to them in Joshua 24, 15. Choose today whom you will serve. Choose the gods whom your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live. But my family and I will serve the Lord. Again, choice is emphasized, indicating we are free to follow God or not. And those choices will have consequences. In the ministry of Jesus, we see that everything about his teaching points to the fact that we have to choose to follow him. God never forces us to do anything. There is a cause and effect to our actions. They matter. God isn't micromanaging our lives. God loves us and wants to be in relationship with us. And the only way that can happen is if we choose that relationship. God doesn't want puppets or teddy bears. He wants the love of his children and the help of his partners, real relationship. And that cannot be coerced or driven by his own will. Everything does happen for a reason, but usually bad news happens because of human sin and the chaos of this world. And here's the good news. Whatever does happen, whatever choices we make or how we drift about on the tides of our culture, he is with us. He walks with us through it. And he uses his power to use the bad things to create good things. Romans 8, 28. We know that God works all things together for the good of the ones who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. God isn't the author of the bad things, but he does endlessly work through them to bring goodness to us, to wring whatever good he can out of the tragedies and heartaches. That's how a friend of mine has been able to go on after his wife died of COVID. He was heartbroken, as you can imagine, but found a community of friends and family who has surrounded him in love. Something tragic happened to him, but God was with him and upheld him through this community. Now he's busier than ever doing things he loves. This is how we learned as a church about the importance of our online presence. When COVID hit, we had to scramble to come up with ways to connect without weekly meeting in person for worship. It was a painful mess at first, but God was with us, pointing the way and working through us. Now we have church family who are regularly with us on Facebook Live. Social isolation 
was terrible, but by God's grace, it has been used for a good purpose. This is what a God of love does for us. He doesn't cause our pain. He doesn't have a master plan that includes hurting us. Rather, he takes the pain we have, heals us, and helps us find ways to move forward, even transforming some of our hurt to joy, some of our challenges to opportunities. This is the God that I follow, the Savior that I believe in. I invite you to do the same. So next time you hear someone say, everything happens for a reason, I hope you remember that usually those reasons have a lot more to do with us than God. But whatever path we take, God is walking with us. Let us pray. Holy God, in every situation we face, send your spirit to guide and protect us. In every situation where we try to comfort others, send your spirit with words of truth and love that we may reflect your grace. In the name of Jesus. Amen.